Good morning all and welcome to this morning's video. So this morning I just have the one pair on watch and that is Pound Kiwi and as you can see from the little S, little S next to Pound Kiwi, I'm actually in a trade on that. <clears throat> My forecast actually shaped up, was actually ready literally as I woke up this morning. So I've just placed a trade on that. Just to say that I took a loss on Kiwi Yen yesterday, so I'm going to start by recapping you wait ages for one trade and then two come along at once, as they say. But I'm going to start by recapping my uh, Kiwi Yen trade, which I'm very, very pleased with. Wouldn't do anything differently on that one. And then I shall talk about what I am stroke was looking for on Pound Kiwi, seeing as the, the entry is actually now shaped up. So Kiwi Yen, we were looking at this on the higher timeframes because we had what, according to my data, was an all-time high okay and then we got close to it we near missed it we had this middle section here we had the middle section there okay we had an element of this to it if i can draw this correctly we had the one two three which tapped into that we had the middle section there we broke above caught people the wrong side of the market and then pushed down aggressively and then we had this element of a one two potential three move to the downside i talked about previously how i wasn't too worried about this because if we separated the structures we had that there and we had this channel here and to me this just looked like profit taking okay for the next wave lower because price had no business coming all the way back up to here because it had likely washed out all of the liquidity and done what it needed to do okay and the clue for that as we drilled down was the fact that we had a one, two, three. I do apologize if my internet starts dipping in and out this morning. It's been doing that quite a lot. I think I might have found the root cause, but if that happens, I apologize. We have this one, two, three there. We break above, catch people the wrong side of the market again and push down. Okay, so we had that daily close. And then I'm using bar replay at the minute just to play things uh, back a little bit. And then we had, if we just play this forward, where is the bar replay tool? Okay. So then we had this structure. Where are we? So that was 10 a.m. yesterday. <clears throat> there we go. So we had the, um, so we had that candle closed there. Okay. So that my rules dictate that because this is a, a one hour structure, so I can't see the structure of this on the four hour chart so much. Okay, it's more of a one hour, a larger one hour structure. So that allows me to drop down to the 15 minute chart. So what I was waiting for, so we had this area of value with the same thing again, we had the, the high there, the near miss to it, we had the middle section there, we even had a one, two, three last leg. Okay, usually, when a one, two, three, last leg lines up with an area of value that we near miss two and the impulses within that uh, the one and the three leg are of a similar length that implies that the move is likely finished here okay and then even on the on the 15 minute chart we had an element of this this was a bit more subjective but we had an element of that to it okay wasn't so bothered about that uh, just because the first touch of that was a was a little bit subjective okay but we had the one two and the three that i was looking for so once this one hour candle this one hour candle closed at or around the area of value I wasn't interested after this one i was waiting for a one hour candle to close in and around this area of value which this one did so that gave me permission according to my rules which i've tried and tested over decades worth of data um, that allowed me to drop down to the 15 minute chart and i already know that if i place a trace like place a trade like this and it turns out to be a loss the first thing i'll hear is the word fomo okay that's not fomo that's tried and tested okay fomo is when you don't know what you're doing and you're just getting in emotionally that's not what i do okay and i already know if i'd have waited for the one hour candle to close okay so waited for this candle to close and you know i didn't get an entry and i was all the way price was all the way down here i already know that people would have said that i was a perfectionist so pe what people are doing is they're basing their opinions of their own trades and other people's trades based on whether it played out or not. So that already tells me that they're not thinking probabilistically. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm 
sticking to my rules. My rules are one hour structure, 15 minute entry. Okay. Especially when we have a one, two, three last leg, which lines up the area of value. And it happens to be a correction that that two wave within the one, two, three last leg, rather than just a sharp point. Okay. So these I'm paying attention to all these factors. If we just had something like that, and then we got to the area of value that is different to an actual correction such as that, that then moves up there. Okay. These are all little intricacies that I'm paying attention to. So I was tagged in there and tagged out immediately. And people think to themselves, usually, what did I do wrong? Well, I didn't do anything wrong because I stuck to my, if you stuck to your rules, you didn't do anything wrong. Okay. If you didn't stick to your rules, then you did something wrong. Even if this banked you 10%. Okay. So that is Kiwi end. Very happy with that. And, uh, if we just look at, if we just play this forward now, which button is it? There we go. I don't use the bar replay. This is clearly doing something different because what happened is price did not find enough liquidity here. Okay. If people are thinking what happened, I'll tell you what happened. Price did not find enough liquidity here to send it to the downside. So therefore, especially as it's retested the back end of this twice, my suspicion is that it's likely coming up to the highs again if we're moving to the downside to give us like a an M style pattern and then maybe we push to the downside from there. But who knows? I'm not going to surmise. I'm just going to let price do its thing. So that is Kiwi Yen. That will be documented over the weekend if I manage to get five minutes to myself. I was on the phone to the tax office yesterday or trying to, but they won't answer their phone. So I've got to call them again today to try and sort out this ongoing tax situation. They're trying to raise my tax bill for, by 13,000% for the same tax year. So uh, work that one out. So I'm trying to call them to get that sorted. Uh, right. So Kiwi, uh, Pound Kiwi. So Pound Kiwi on the higher time frames, we have, we have this, okay? So we have this high here. Okay. We, we didn't break above. That is a factor in my thinking, okay? But as I say, not all of these highs are broken above straight away. I do like the fact that we have an element of a one, two, three leading up to that, where you can see the middle section there. And what I what I also like is the fact that we have this last week's weekly close. Okay, close like this, very bearish. So to me, this looks, even if we are going to come back up to take out this high, which this high tapped into but didn't break above, it's likely, based on this weekly candle, that we will find our way down to there if we were going to do that. And then maybe because this move up was more impulsive than this move down has been, maybe this then acts as the middle section to push back up. And then we get something more like that. Okay. Just drawing that roughly, but certainly we could capitalize on a move down to there and potentially a lot lower. Okay. So as I drill down, things start to get a bit clearer. We have a, what I like about this is we have a one, two, three, expanding reversal structure leading into this sharp hook point okay this this retested the back end of all of this we have an element of a head and shoulders pattern there okay and we tap into that by way of a reversal structure and then you can see we finished on a bit of a wick there so that made me think that we're likely coming back back up to retest the back end of that okay I'll just get rid of get rid of that then we have, this is interesting as well. So the sequence has not been great. Okay. So we tapped into that area there. We then get the, the push down. Just analyze the, analyzing this on the fly. What we do have here is we have the little three touch there, which taps into this. Um, there's a little inflection point there. Okay. Which is more prevalent on the 15 minute chart. We retest the back end of that price pushes to the downside. Then we get a bit of a, uh, a little bit of strange pr price action, but you can see price is still responding to structure. Okay. We kind of tap into this area here and retest the back end of that. We move to the downside. And then what I like about this is because these are my favorite setups. If we just analyze this, what do we have? We have a one, two, three, where the second touch breaks above the first, but narrowly misses this sharp hook point, which just happens to be the retest to the back end of that. Okay. And if we just zoom down a little bit more, we also have this little hook point there. I wasn't so bothered about that because that was sat above here, whereas this was more the retest, the back end of it. But regardless, look what we've done now. We have a one, 
two, three touch structure where both touches miss this hook point. We then tap into not just this hook point, but this one as well. We also, if I'm, if I remember rightly, we also retest, uh, we retest the back end of that. Okay. So we've tapped out both of these highs and retested the back end of that in the form of a one, two, three touch structure. There is a lot of liquidity that has likely just been tapped out by that move. Okay. So what I did is I got short. My entry was literally ready as I, as I woke up. So what I did is I put my stop loss above here. Okay. And I placed my entry a couple of pips below the close of this one hour candle. So this was taken on the one hour candle. My entry stipulated if if three touch or if three touch one hour continuation or two touch one hour continuation with the three touch structural approach, which is we've we've kind of got both of them. We've got the one, two, three, but we've also got a, a three touch leading into that. Then I'll look to get short the 15 minute risk entry within it. That's the minimum requirements. You know, if I get a one hour entry even better okay so we've got the one hour confirmation not just a 15 minute but these were my minimum requirements so i'm now in that trade and due to the risk to reward um i amended my forecast slightly because i was intending to potentially set a take profit here if i could get a five to one but seeing as i can only get a two and a half percent to the low now what i did is i amended my forecast so what i've done is i set a take profit at 90% of the range, okay, so from, from there to there, I set a take profit, okay, so I measured from that range to the bottom of this range, where I would anticipate some heavy profit taking if we do break this low, okay, and I set, so I set a take profit there, and I'll be trailing my stop loss accordingly if this starts to break this low, okay, and then that would make sense mathematically because if we measure this impulse and we assume the continuation leg out is of a similar length, that would take us down there for this phase one, phase two, phase three. Okay, so that is pound kiwi. What a lot of people will do if they've been affected by the previous loss. Okay, so if I'd been affected by kiwi n, What's happened here? Why is that not deleting? Okay, so if I'd have been affected by Kiwi Yen, what a lot of traders do is they would have seen an entry like this shape up and they would have gone, no, I'm not too sure about that. I'm not sure if that's quite right. And a lot of the time what they're doing is they're talking themselves out of the trade because the previous one didn't play out, okay? I don't do that, okay? I've been doing this long enough now to not be affected by the outcome of one trade, okay? In our community, we say that one trade is not going to make or break you. And, uh, you know, if this one just does a handbrake turn and just rockets to the upside, I'm not bothered. I don't care. I'm doing what I've tested and what's worked for me in testing. None of that is a guarantee of what's going to play out in a forward, you know, in a, in a live trading envi environment. But uh, that's all we have to go on is past data. OK, uh, so that is pound Kiwi. OK, I'm just going to monitor this one now. I'm going to be I'm going to monitor this. Um, every hour in fact are we still on the bar replay tool no we're not uh, i'm going to monitor this every hour just to see how it responds if we start getting down to the end uh, down to the bottom of this structure i'll move to break even and uh, we shall see how this one plays out uh, as i said full transparency in my videos if you're watching outside of uh, our private discord community our falcon community i'm not one of these i'm not going to put a, a lambo behind me and uh, have a picture of myself on the yacht to convince you to uh, <laughs> believe in what I'm doing. If I take a win, loss, or break even, I'm going to break it down. And uh, regardless of how do we get out of this bar replay thing? Okay, but we'll see how this one plays out. Okay, why why is that not on exit bar replay? Okay. That's it, right? So we're out of bar replay now. So we'll see how this one plays out. But anyway, folks, I hope you've enjoyed this video and i shall see you again in the next one and i will of course update you as to how this trade plays out have a great rest of your day